Fidel Castro, Lenny Pasco, Carlos the Jackal, Umar Akmal, Mahatma Gandhi, Grant and Andy, Brendan Bian, Austin Ian, Guerrilla Cricket. Hello, welcome again to uh, Guerrilla Cricket. Bit of a bit of a pop up podcast. This one. Uh, we've just had a series between South Africa and England, three ODIs, um, and it seemed pretty entertaining. And even though England lost, it felt a bit like they won. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Uh, but we're going to chat through uh, that and the implications of it and you know, winners and losers and, and the like. And boy, have we got some great company to do it with. Luminaries, indeed, of uh, South African cricket commentary and gorillas too. Uh, the great Umpo. Hello, Umpo. How are you? Hi, Tony. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And Tim, the cricket guy himself, Tim Dale Lace. <laughs> Hello, Tim. How's that? It, it, it is just about okay. And of course, ever present on his desert island, his island in the sun. God, is, I wish uh, I was. <laughs> you just heard it. <laughs> Not a profanity will be uttered between now and the end of the show, I guarantee uh-huh. It's the bear. Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. Well, let's get started. Uh, Shall we start at the beginning? Just because I think genuinely every English cricket fan is excited. Um, Joffre Archer, what did we make of that six for? Was, was, was it show, show, poor batting or had he reached a gear that South Africa weren't quite expecting? What do you reckon was going on there, guys? And Poe, about you first. I think it was a, a bit of both. I think I think a lot of the South Africans saw him in the SA20. He was getting, he was cranking up the gears. I think he was bowling at third gear there and still taking wickets. Um, I think it was just a bit of surprise from the from the South Africans, largely because of the fact that I think England wasn't bowling too well in the previous two matches, um, and 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 obviously. The thing with, with with a guy who bowls 150, it's 150, 150 on any track. And um, it, it wasn't necessarily a surprise. It's just like I think Joffre found that um, that 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 yeah, he found found the right line and length and it worked. Yeah, he certainly did. And Tim, it, it it I mean at the time, yes, he'd taken a couple of wickets in his oh well, yeah, I think he'd taken one wicket in his first spell. But South Africa got to 156 for three, I think, at the sort of the halfway stage. And they were looking in pretty tidy order then, and it was all getting a bit frustrating. But um, it seemed to be that second spell that really made the difference, wasn't it? Starting with Markram, and, and then I think, you know, I reckon your talisman in terms of a run chase, get him, and it all looks a bit shaky, doesn't it? Yes, um, I, 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 I think you're right. I think... I think with Joffrey, he's, he's a rhythm bowler. I think he got in, he got into a rhythm, and when he gets into a rhythm like that, he's actually very difficult to dislodge. Very difficult. It doesn't actually matter what you're doing as a batsman. He, he is that good. Um, so as much as South Africa were up with the rate and, and looking, looking good, I just think everything clicked for Joffrey. And when he gets into that rhythm, when he gets a bit between his teeth, he's actually very, very dangerous bowler. So he he, did, he deserves it, no doubt about it. Yeah, that lovely mm. languid run up there. What did you I mean? He, he, he well, just came back to normal, didn't he? In a way. Well, that was the thing, wasn't it? I mean, he he, he I think he was quite expensive in that first spell, but then he got he that wicket right at the end of it just before he came off. And then he came back and got a couple, didn't he? Um, and then. When he came back, did he? Was it the third spell when he got Miller, wasn't it? It was the second mm. one. It was pretty second spell. After, so he got Miller pretty soon after Mark. And then, Ryan. and then we were in trouble because Classen was going well with Parnell, and then he just seemed to slip up the pace, man. I mean, the ball that got Classen was on him quick, and he clearly didn't get over it. Was caught on the outer, <clears throat> and once you you kind of felt that, that that was the point in the game where you thought, okay, England have now got this because at that point. You know, when they got Miller out and Klassen was in and he hadn't really got going yet, and then <clears throat> Marco Janssen didn't last very long, uh, you thought we'd get Parnell. In fact, we did we drop? No, was it who was dropped? Was it Klassen was dropped at slip? Or was it uh, Marco Janssen? I can't remember. But someone was dropped on a hat-trick ball, on a second, on a second delivery, got 
oh, I can't remember now. Who did he get out? He got he got Markram oh. first, then he got Miller. And but Miller, he got but Janssen in between. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, someone got dropped at slip. Someone got uh, Yeah, I think it was Janssen. Uh, it, was it Janssen? No, okay, yeah. so he didn't last that much longer anyway. <clears throat> but then you thought those two got away with it, and England were running out of ideas quick because whoever came on was getting slapped up <laughs> back over their head for six by both of them, Parnell and, and Klassen. And he came back on and he kind of pulled it back by getting once he got uh, Klassen out, you kind of thought that was a game over. Um, yeah. But he certainly seemed to get his pace up and he looked like Joffre of old, you know, he looked virtually unplayable. Uh, and you kind of felt that. In himself, he you, the look on his face was like I'm back, you know. Yeah. Because in, fir- in that first game, he got tap, man. I mean, he went for eighty in his ten overs, and he was getting slapped all over the place. But you felt he felt that he was back where he belonged, basically. I thought by the end of that game, uh, and it was really good to see. And it's a really important thing for England that he is, you know. So we'll, we'll move on pretty quickly from Joffre because we want to cover the series into the whole and you know South Africa as well but sort of one last question in that area I saw Joss Butler who's clearly thinking World Cup year World Cup year I'm captain I've got a win now um he, he said he thinks Joffre should get as much cricket as he possibly can um on the other hand there's a there's, there's, there's sort of the flip side of that is if you you know players talk about too much cricket do you do you get him straight into that Bangladesh series, which England have done? Uh, I suppose they're giving him the rest in New Zealand. Um, surely you handle him a little bit with kid gloves, don't you, and sort of ramp up his involvement up towards the World Cup. And, that, and obviously they're thinking ashes. England, <laughs> England will be thinking ashes, 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 Joffre. Let's see if we can knock Stephen Smith on the head again. Um, oh, I'd love that. At, at the same time, at the same time, you know, you you, you don't want to break him. The, how, how do you strike that balance, do you think? Well, how many games are there in Bangladesh? He's played in, what, three, OD, three ODIs and a, and a T20 series, where he bowls four overs at a pot in, the, in a T20 series. And he's bowled in three ODIs. In fact, he's only bowled in two. Then he has a month off and goes to Bangladesh and plays, what, a total of six games, three ODIs and three T20s or something? That's not overworking someone, even if he has got, he's he, come back He is in injury. both squads. He is in both the Yeah, both but still, he's going to bowl, what, potentially 30 overs in an ODI and potentially 12 overs in a T20. You know, he's got to bowl in competitive matches. Otherwise, he's not going to be match fit. Well, now, the Ashes and, and Test cricket, that's a whole different ball game. But he's not going to bowl down in, in uh, New Zealand, is he? Because he's not in the squad. So he's got to play competitive cricket. Otherwise, it's pointless. And actually, being in Bangladesh is probably not a bad thing. Um, it's going to be slow, low wickets, you'd have thought, which is probably what's going to be going on in the World Cup. Yeah, that's true. Get him a bit sort of conditioned for those conditions. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, now there was something about this series that I think England played a series after the T20 World Cup. They stayed in Australia and played three ODIs. I think for the first time, probably since 2000. And- 14 when Gorilla was founded we all looked at each other and we went what well, I don't think it. we'll bother <laughs> <laughs> which was you know we surprised even our, even ourselves we, we just thought with it we just don't care but now we're in a, somehow this series seemed to matter an awful lot more it was still a three series bilateral as it were and yet it still seemed to mean something it certainly meant something for South Africa didn't it, um, Tim? Oh, certainly. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Because of the uh, World Cup qualifications, it was extremely important for South Africa uh, when you take into consideration that they forfeit the, forfeited the, the series against Australia. So it was doubly important for from a South African point of view. Um, and even more so after the series when South Africa have been docked uh, points, which is uh, affecting their qualifications ever so slightly. So it, it was extremely important for South Africa that the way they played was evidence of that, in my opinion, right through through all three games. They knew it was important and they played like like it mattered, like it wasn't just another bilateral series that, that means very little. Yeah, it was kind of different motivations, I think, for both sides. I mean, England, what, Josh, uh, was it five on the trot? 
London had ended up losing, particularly after the first two. Um, pretty poor record since they, you know, they had a little trot in the woods of Amstelveen and thought they were world, they were still the world beaters. Um, but a few players missing, and I think a real some real points to prove for England as well. So you know, you had you know there was material risk for South Africa. You you needed to get those points. And by the way, Umbo. You still do, don't you? And you haven't helped yourself because you've just been shot in the foot by a few points for a slow over rate. So what's, what's yeah. happened there? So um, I think that obviously slow over rates were because of the Kimberley uh, match. But without the slow over rates, we just needed to have one win and we'd be ahead of the West Indies. Um, but then you'd have to hope that New Zealand whitewash um, Sri Lanka at home, which is plausible. Um but now what happens is that South Africa need to win both their games and hope that New Zealand win two of their final games and so and Sri Lanka can win one and South Africa will make it through to the World Cup because it's not enough to just win one game which we had anticipated. So before this series, I think Tim and I were speaking about three wins out of the five. So we needed to at least win one of the games against England and then win the next two to give yourself a chance of making it to the World Cup. Now it's now four out of the last five. So effectively, South Africa actually helped themselves because I think I, we weren't even expecting us to actually win one ODI match, let alone the series. Um, but I think, I wouldn't say it's extra motivation. I just think it, it kind of felt like there's a new... Because obviously you've got new coaches, there's a new uh, system, players are, are, are a lot more freer, new culture, even though like one person's left, um, the entire thing. Um, and yeah, so I think it, it's made it a lot harder. Well, it's made it a lot easier for South Africa. They need to beat the Netherlands and hope there's no rain here in South Africa. So that's going to be quite interesting because we're going to have to be praying. Uh, we have to take them to the driest part of the country, which is where we took you. Um, <laughs> is that Kimberley then? So, yes, Kimberley Kimberley and, 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 yes, they don't get they, they do get rain, but they don't get a lot of rain um in the summer compared to either us taking taking people to Durban or or, or, or being up here on the high felt. Um we can't take people to Cape Town because of the World Cup, but um yeah, so it just made it a little bit easier. Just win all your games, get to the World Cup. Uh at least it's in our hands. We we're not like Sri Lanka who need to hope Netherlands does something. Ireland need to hope that New Zealand does them a favor, Netherlands does them a favor, and then they need to then somehow find a way to win um, their ODIs. Um, so yeah, look, I think it's 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 I think we've put ourselves in a situation from when it was before the series. Um, we 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 are we have to get ourselves comfortable with the fact that we're going to Zimbabwe in June to now then say actually um, it's in our hands. If we don't beat the Netherlands, then we definitely deserve to be playing in Zimbabwe. You'll beat the Netherlands. Don't worry about that. You might have lost them in a T20 in a World Cup, but uh, well, I the think... first game in that series was what was rained out. So that's the other issue that we have is that we had a no result against them, and then Omicron happened, which kind of skew, screwed everything. Yeah. And we'll be we'll be without our <laughs> IPO players as well, which is about six players. Oh, I mean, Norky, well, absolutely. Yeah, Nor- Nor- but Nor- yeah. still, it's the Netherlands, Nor- man. Nor- you should be. Yeah. That's there, what you. That's what you would have said. That's what we said before the World Cup. Yeah, but that's T twenty. T- t- yeah, but T twenty is is a different ball game. There's a certain amount of luck in a T twenty. Things can go horribly wrong. Within fifty overs, it's you, you know over fifty overs, you should massacre the Netherlands. Really, I mean, they've hardly got. I mean, when we played them, there's hardly. I mean, if you've got decent bowlers, they struggled. There's about two players who can score at close to a hundred strike rate, and the rest are pretty poor. To be fair, their bowling's not great. You know, I reckon your second string could should. I mean, look, they've won. They've only won two games and lost mm. sixteen. I'm looking at the table now. How many people automatically qualify as the first ten? No, it's the first eight. Uh, eight. eight. Okay. Them. I mean, so West Indies are at eight, and they've played twenty four matches, and they've lost fifteen of those, and only won nine. You've won seven and lost ten, uh, and you're ten points behind them. It's ten points for a win. How many games you got left? Just two, you say? Uh, two. Two more. Two, so you can get to 98 points. I don't know. West Indies must be out of ODIs. I mean, having played 20, I mean, they've played more than anyone else. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, they're done. They're done with the Super League. Um, yes. They're just now sitting in a spot where <laughs> they're hoping <laughs> South Africa lose all their games and Sri Lanka don't win one more. Um, <laughs> so they're well, thinking. yeah, but I mean, so if you win your two games, yeah, Sri Lanka, it doesn't matter what happens to Sri Lanka. They're a point behind you. See, unless you get 
fine for more overs. Uh, yes, or suppose. Sri Lanka whitewash New Zealand and New Zealand, and then that ain't gonna happen to either. I think it's a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're safe. South Africa That's my worrying bet. about what the Netherlands are doing in order to qualify is a bit like you know Manchester United hoping they get a draw at Dorking. You know, I mean, it, it, it's exactly. just, it somehow just doesn't sound right to me, but. I think that that's a whole other discussion. I, I was going to ask though. It looked to me, from, from certainly to us as we were covering the series, that the attendances were pretty good, and the so they chosen. I think for a very practical reason, which you can tell me what it was, you can remind me. But um, you know, Bloemfontein and Kimberley. Kimberley looked a beautiful ground. It, it was grass banks. It was loads of people. It's some lovely, quirky, characterful stands, and 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 it looked packed out. And it, and it. it um, it seemed to have a really nice feel to it, and I and I got a similar sense of Bloemfontein as well. So, how was it a well covered, well watched? You know, did it gather a lot of attention in South Africa? The, the series. I thought there was a vibe in Kimberley. I, I actually kind of liked it. I think the one worry we had was the price point for the tickets, right? So uh, the SA twenty tickets are less than fifty rand, which is, I'm assuming, pound wise, like two and a half pounds. Wow. Yes. Uh, so you could buy three pints for that in most pubs, probably four. Well, <laughs> well yeah. You could but buy then... a, you can buy no, you can buy a pint for two pounds fifty these days, Jesus. No, yeah. I said you could buy four pints for that. Mm. No, you couldn't. What two no, pounds? Sorry, you could buy no you could buy a quarter of a pint. Yeah. You could buy about half a pint for two. That's what I meant to say. I think <laughs> yes. they know what I meant. I know what Inflation's I meant. Inflation's got you guys in, in, yes. in a little bit of trouble. Oh, um, and then and then but then the, for, the, for the international games, it was 250 rand, which is five times more. And so we were all just sitting there thinking CSA had made a massive, massive error. Mm. Um, I don't know if the prices have dro- dropped since then, um, but it was good to see that there were fans in the stands. It was good to see that um, the, the crowds were there. Um, those are the two flattest wickets in South Africa. If you want to score runs, if you want to bat well, bowlers are going to toil the whole day. So... Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get that, and largely they chose that because the 19 World Cup was being held up here in Benoni and in Potchefstroom, so we couldn't take England to the slaughterhouse um, in the east. Um, and then obviously SA20s got all these all these all these uh, grounds occupied, and you've also got a Women's World Cup happening in uh, Port Elizabeth as well, or Tabeka as well as yeah, as yeah. well as as at Newlands. So you don't have that many options. And obviously the High Felt is hosting the SA20 final. So you don't have that many options. But I thought it was a great one because those fans don't get a lot of cricket um, or international cricket. Um, and the Bloemfontein fans are going to lose out on their Division 1 status soon because their side's already and we're halfway through the season looking to be relegated. Mm-hmm. But the Northern Cape fans are hoping that their side um, gets themselves into the Division 1. So... Um, they love cricket down there, and it was really great to see the fans and, and the stands and some sort of a vibe. And it kind of tells you that maybe there is some sort of a new dawn. But what really did help was that win. SA20 helped, but it was also that win on Friday night, that comeback win, where people then realized that this could be possibly uh, a purchase team that's coming back. And South Africans love their sports teams. If you start winning, they will go to, to the stadium. Yeah, there's mm. a lot of English fans there too. I mean... Uh, it was a, well, look, we, as the camera tracked round, we saw a lot of the, you know, it was the same guy was there flags, three games in a go. Yeah. Stoke City, <laughs> Osset, I no, remember. But, but, I picked out a few of them. Chesterfield, I remember. That's what we team. expect, was, right? I just, I just want to know what those guys do so I can do the same thing and follow South around the world. <laughs> as like a one man barmy army. So if you're at Lords then, or well, maybe not Lords, they probably wouldn't allow you to, but if you were at the Oval, what flag are you hanging over the, the fence of the Oval then? Po, what's going to be written on your what flag? flag? It'll be written in Fosleris, where I come from, or or Benoni or Boxburg, because okay. the nearest stadium to us is is the Benoni one, where we had the opening game of the Under-19 World Cup. Okay. What about you, Tim? What's written over your flag, draped over the balcony at the Oval? I don't know. I, I can't. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not good with this. This. Uh, come this, on. This going, what? He's, this um, question wasn't on the script. Don't throw those. No, in. I, I don't know. It's, it's good. though. No, it's good. <laughs> It's good. It's fantastic. I just can't think. Okay. I can't think. Oh, I'll tell right. you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. No, I, I, if, even though I've been back here in South Africa now for for 20 years, 
I still have a fondness to England. I still have a fondness uh, to my mm, time there. So mm, I would have the um, the emblem of Worcestershire. Spent four years there. So oh, I have the, the pears, emblem of Worcestershire the pears, on the my Worcestershire flag. Pears. Fantastic. The pears. You, you could do a lot, a lot worse. Uh, well, all right. So um, let's not forget, by the way, um, in all this excitement of Joffrey Archer and the fantastic um, performance by England, uh, you won the first two. <laughs> now, what was it? What where did where were the points where you think South Africa had the edge over England in those first two games at Bloemfontein? Because they got closer. First one was frankly a rout. The second one, England bowling just didn't seem to be able to to defend that. What seemed like a very reasonable total. Um, but nonetheless, South Africa had the edge very much in both those games. Where where, where was the difference for those two? Do you think? Poe, I'll throw that one to you. Look, I, I I think it was the I think the bowling in the first game. Um, I think like I just not care, just turn the game yeah. around with Sander Magala in the middle yeah. overs because England were one fifty without loss. I I was about to switch off the TV, um, and then things started happening. But that's the nature of this of the, of this game. Um, but I do think the middle order batting. For those first two games was 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 the difference. I thought England just kept on losing wickets at regular intervals, whereas even though in that first game it felt like South Africa lost wickets at regular intervals, they still managed to keep getting partnerships and 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 keep getting themselves there and thereabouts. So my thing was, I know this team would always struggle to score three hundred, but if you have a bad batting day and you come out at two hundred and ninety, um, even in the match and Kimberley got to about two eighty seven. That tells me that you give yourselves a chance with the bowling attack that you have. And that first ODI kind of showed you that it wasn't the greatest batting performance, but we managed to get to, we managed to bowl England out with our bowlers, um, even though it was a very subpar score. The second one, that middle order then showed us what it would look like when you're actually playing towards your ceiling. Um, obviously, that 10 by 100 was insane, but Everyone else off the Timber either gave us a 30 or a 40 or some sort of a 50 run partnership um, after that to kind of take the team to about 340, whatever, I think it was 47, the, the target. That, the yeah, Miller finished that off exceptionally well as well, didn't he? Uh, I, but, I mean, I think the second game, actually, the first 10 overs mm. was the important part of the game. The ball seemed to be, I mean, I didn't see it, but from what I can gather, I watched a lot of the second innings. I watched the end of England's first innings. I mean, <clears throat> Apparently, the ball was doing stuff in the first 10 overs and England were in all sorts of trouble. But after that, I mean, when we were bowling, the ball did absolutely nothing. Cross-seam deliveries weren't moving. There was no turn. There was nothing. I mean, that was a batting paradise except for the first 10 overs of the game. Uh, and I got a suspicion if it had been a day-night game and the pitch had been heated up a little before the first 10 overs wouldn't have been such a problem as well. And it would have, might have been a slightly different game. Mm. Brilliant chase. First game, I think lack of inexperience in England. I mean, we're missing so many players um, that you'd expect to be in the side that offer stability in the middle order. I think, you know, Duckett did bugger all all series. Uh, not sure. Um, he's the right man for those kinds of wickets, really. Three, three naught and 20. Is not exactly. Great, yeah. It's not great returns. Uh, Brooke got an 80 in that second game, but didn't do much either side of that. And then everyone else did what you'd kind of expect. Butler was amazing throughout the series. Um, really. Uh, I mean, he proved in that, in that last game with Milan. I mean, what, we were 20 for three. Um, mm. And it's interesting reading articles, you know, you have to remember how to bat an ODI. It's not important. You don't have to hit every ball when you come in for six. You don't have to go off at a pace. You, you, you can drag it back. Uh, and it was important they remembered that because, you know, a 240-run partnership really set the game up for England and allowed Moeen to come in and slap a quick 50 and to get up to that score. I think that was the, the, that was the difference. Uh, lack of players in the first 10 overs in the first two games, I think. Well, I was going to come on to winners and losers on both sides. So you've segued us beautifully into that already, Bear. Um, I'll tell you one for me, and then we'll then we'll go back to, perhaps to England. Um, as a external watcher of South Africa, I was really quite pleased for Temba Bavuma. He seems to have he's he's had such a lot of 
I don't know, shit to deal with, frankly. <laughs> you know, he, he, he hasn't necessarily lived up to his billing. He's, he's, I'm not sure he's always carried the mantle of captaincy particularly comfortably. And yet in this series, he, he genuinely looked <laughs> a class apart. He got that fabulous ton. Um, and I thought generally he, he played and captained superbly. Is there a feeling that he is now settling into his job, Tim? I, I think I think so. I think the important thing with with with, with Klemper is he feels the criticism a lot more than other players might do. Mm. So if somebody's criticizing, he feels it. He, it. It hurts. Whether it's whether it's right or wrong, whether the criticism is valid or not, it's something that he feels. I think he's now in a in a better space in that. I don't think he quite takes takes it on so harshly as he used to. I think he he sees it as okay, that's fine, that's your opinion. I'm gonna go and do my own thing. I'm gonna keep myself in my own little box. I'll do do my job, and you 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 worry about you. I think he sometimes takes on too much, um, and I can understand why that why that why that is being the case. Um, but I, I do think he is just genuinely, and, and he has said it publicly, I think he is in a better space now than he was three months ago. I mm. genuinely think he's just in a better space mentally than where he was a few months ago, particularly after that World Cup. Everybody was thinking he's got to step down, he's going to step down after the World Cup, that, that, that loss against the, the, the Netherlands. There was no other option. Yeah. I think now he's thinking, actually, no. If, if the players believe in me, if I believe in myself, if, if Shukri, the coach, believes in me, then I, I, I want to hang on. So I, I, I do. I do think he is just genuinely in a better space than he was two to three months ago, which is a huge plus because he's, he is a very good player. Yeah, he is. And who stood out... Uh... Who were the winners and losers for South Africa, do you think, um, Poe? I mean, Miller, we know, is class yeah. in white ball formats, isn't he? Yeah, I just want to close out Tim's, add on to Tim's point. Um, I think a guy like Timber was never going to resign after that World Cup. Um, yes, he takes the criticism on, and it's it's who he's been. But he's South Africa's black cap, first black captain. There was always going to be drama whenever the side did something. Mm-hmm. And... And even after that 100, it was, oh, he scored 100, but. Um, and there's always these caveats of, no, Timber can play T20, can't play T20, but he can play ODIs and Test cricket, so that's fine. But And, and that's wrong, because the other thing that I think the, the, the people, or people outside of the team setup didn't understand was that his own teammates backed him in a T20 setup. His own teammates talked him up in, a T20, in the T20 setup. And so if... And so I, I, the, the only thing for me was if the people playing the game want him in there and there's, there's no massive uproar of him, uh, of, of them wanting him to leave, then clearly we may have just gotten our lines, well, our lines crossed and we were using other agendas to, to talk about it. Because I think largely, obviously, Timber, Timber is Timber. He, he's not going to strike at 150, but he can play freely. And we've seen that in glimpses in his career. And I think... Yes, that rest, there was, a, there was he was on Instagram and he was on the beach in shades. And I was like, oh, cool. That's nice. Like, you know, while everyone's busy essay twinting it up. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and it, was, it, was, it was really nice to see. But, like, really happy for him. He's the biggest winner out of all of this because he got himself an essay 20 contract off of, off of that. Even though when we were looking at that essay 20 auction, we were asking ourselves if you pick the test opener, over Timber Bavuma. Now look, they've decided actually we don't need that said test opener. Um, we want Timber into the sunrises. So he's the biggest winner. David Miller's been David Miller's been David Miller for the past. I think since 2019, David Miller averages 50 guys. Like it's, yeah, 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 yeah. He had a he had a rough <laughs> period, didn't he? I mean, mm. Miller had there was Miller. I mean, he's been around for bloody ever. And when he first yeah. came in, he was like he, he had the potential that he has shown over the last few mm. years it seemed to drop off for a large for a couple of years and you kind of thought where has he gone but he's he's definitely pulled it back recently mm. uh, yeah um, i mean just timber just um, i mean there must be so much pressure on timber as you say as the first 
black captain of South Africa, you always kind of think there's extra pressure on him. I was looking from the outside, you know. It's almost you imagine there's a part of the population that wants him to fail, you know, in the same mm. way that people want other people to fail in in other sports. You know, it's just like told you so sort of thing. I mean, there, there was there was that. I mean, going into the World T20, he'd been injured before the World T20 as well, so mm. he had a, he had a poor World Cup. Um, and he was one. I mean, we. I mean, there was. Should he have played in the World T Twenty? He wasn't. England carried Jason Roy. It. England yeah. carried Jason Roy for the past couple of years. Yeah, no exactly. one said anything about it. Well, they are. You mentioned that. They are. Come on to that in our winners and losers discussion. Don't worry. We are <laughs> talking about that. Next point. You know. Yeah, but to close out the winners and losers, Heiner Klaassen has won. Heiner Klaassen, Sander yeah. Magala, they won. Heiner klassen has been dropped in and out of the side. Now, all of a sudden, new regime, new set of coaches, positive mindset in terms of approach to batting. Heiner Klaassen is effectively a starter for me going into that World Cup in India, regardless of whether we've got two wicketkeepers on the field, which was the previous coach's issue. Uh, when we ever asked him about a wicketkeeper batter who could actually bat. Um, and so that was, th- those are the guys. Um, and... I don't think Adam Markham did himself a disservice. Um, I still think he's, he's on the hot seat uh, because, yeah, you can't be averaging 28, 30. And you've Average 30, at that, nearly 34 in this one. Yeah, that, that many games. Um, that 49 was really pretty, uh, but you want him to, to kind of, you want him and Miller to kind of kick on in that little middle over back end period. Because if they can do that, that's your chance of getting to 400. Yeah. Um, as you saw in that chase. From a bowling side, there's one man who stood above them all, and that was Sasanda Magala. I thought Sasanda played bowled really, really well. He had his moments. He had like he had his moments where you're like, okay, no, that's Sasanda that I know. But managed to get his fitness up and get through the fitness test so he could play, be available for the entire series. He only played two games, but I thought he um, put his hand up, and he's putting his hand up in SA20. Tim's talking about some of the IPL guys going. Sasanda could possibly be one of the guys going to the IPL, which makes that Netherlands series even more worse. Because he's lovely to come think... on because he's so. Let's shall we kindly say distinctive? <laughs> yeah, he yes. is. <laughs> he's one of those guys. You love it's, cricket's one of those sports where you can have the big lads. And, Gives you uh... plenty to talk about, and there is plenty of him to talk yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. But he's yeah he's but he, yeah he went for under seven and over Magala. He took a three for didn't he? he got three for forty six. Mm. I think in the was well really the well game? and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, really second well game, game was was his was his shining light. Was the second game, mm. and he and he and he did he did he did really well. Well, let's let's um let's have a quick probe at England, and uh, I'm sure we'll get the bear sports winners and losers. I think you've got a you know Roy. We thought, oh right, here we go, fantastic <laughs> knock. Although he had his luck early on, got that ton. He's back. Roy is oh, back. Oh, and then he, he genuinely played like he hadn't picked up a bat for about five years in the next two games. Just it was awful. What? <laughs> well, he's. I mean, he's. Yeah, he's one of the guys that uh, isn't a potential. You know, they keep giving him last chance saloon. I mean, we were talking about this in the last game, weren't we? I mean, if you go into a World Cup, do you give certain players who were there at the last World Cup their swan song and say, "Well, he won it last time. We put him back in a, in the side." I, you know, to be honest, I don't think Jason Roy will prosper in India in a World Cup. I think uh, Darwin Milan certainly stuck his hand up and said, oh, I deserve to be in this side. He's hardly played any ODIs. They stick him in the T20 side all the time. He yeah. doesn't play a lot of ODIs. You've got to have a backup opener, um, presuming that Johnny Bairstow comes back and he's in. I mean, this is the thing. Uh, again, there was an article, I haven't read it yet today, about you know Josh Butler bemoaning, or actually it's an opportunity um, over this next, we haven't got many ODIs coming up, but you know, so many players and playing in so many franchise tournaments are not really available for the England side. But actually, if you've got a pretty, what you think is your uh, nailed on 13, maybe 12 of your squad going to India, then actually maybe it's not a bad thing that, you, you know, Root's going to be back. We all think that Stokes is coming back out of retirement, right, for the World Cup. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't think. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. Maybe he won't, but... If you assume that Root gets back in the side because he's a fantastic player and uh, ODI is, just, you know, I don't think he's a bad T20 player, but he certainly plays in my ODI side. And then you have Stokes back in the side. There's only one spot available, possibly, uh, and that would be three or four, maybe. And, and then you've got Harry Brook and David Milan can fill that spot. So they should play a lot of games and, 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 and 
try and nail down that place. And then whether you bring Hales back, as for the bowling, if Joffre's fit and Wood's fit, there's two of your bowlers. Uh, Adil Rashid's going to play in the World Cup. Your Moen's going to play. So there's four bowlers. And then you've got to find probably Sammy Curran gets in the side. So there's a few spots in England. And mainly, I would say, they would be thinking about their batting options. Um, and therefore, you know, why not open it up and try a lot, bunch of these players? Don't think, as I said, don't think Duckett did himself any favours. Uh, he'll play, I think he's going to Bangladesh, isn't he? He's Roy Carolina. is going to Bangladesh. He's in the ODI squad. Yeah, only and Duckett from memory might be in the T20 squad only. I'm just having a quick look to see if I can confirm that. I uh, give, yeah, I Roy, give I... Roy definitely in the is definitely only in the ODI squad. I mean, there's um, a whole English summer to go as well. I mean, if Roy hits some form in England in summer, it, I mean, this is it. Are you in form when you're going into the World Cup or do you get carried? Yeah. Roy and ODI is duck it in T20s. That's what they're doing in Bangladesh. But I think England have a pretty good idea what their squad will be going into that World Cup. I imagine yeah. South Africa do as well. I mean, Jesus. I mean, uh, to be honest, if Nokia played in that last game, would have England have got to that 340? Would he have taken a wicket in that middle period? I mean, he's a stick on, isn't he, for, for the uh, South African side going forward? I mean, he's amazing. He's so quick as well. It's, it's quite mad. And actually, thought, your batting looked quite settled actually in the middle order. Yeah, no, it did. It, it did. It was. It was everything. It hadn't been in Test cricket somehow, which is kind of kind of interesting. You need to I start. Mean, playing, it, it, you need to start it, playing baseball, and then you can put yeah. all these players in your Test side. <laughs> when you guys, we, I, I remember when you, was it Classen was, was the one you were saying should have gone to Australia. Is that right? But he had an injury problem. There was one player you kept going on on your. Uh, no, um, Ryan Rickleton. Um, Ryan Rickleton. Yeah. That's oh right. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But he's not going to play until he has that ankle surgery. There's no way CSA is going to yeah. take that risk. Yeah. That ankle's about to blow at any time. Well, he can't take. Vic, Victor did, did say did say there's less risk in picking him at home. I don't think they will pick him, but he did say there's but less risk. Why would there be less risk in picking him? Is that the doctor's closer? Because yeah. exactly <laughs> because it, because it literally takes five minutes to get a surgeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, in, in Australia, it takes. Takes days. Well, no, yeah, but it, it, the surgery, yeah, but if he, his ankle blows in a, in a test match in Australia, he just gets someone else on a flight. It's only a, what, 14 hour flight. I mean, someone can come out. I mean, in a modern day of travel, I mean, England have done it in the past. Someone's gone back to have a baby. Someone's flown out to join the squad. It's not ideal. Or rather, their wife has, but yeah, we know yeah. what I mean. Well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I mean, <laughs> in the modern game, players used to flying around the world and picking up a bat in no time at all or a ball and you know uh, maybe they should have taken that chance what's wrong with his ankle then has he got ligament trouble or is it about to just collapse it's it's ligament trouble he needed to have surgery to fix it um but uh him and his domestic physio have managed to patch it up pretty well for him to play for the past three months with um with painkillers and injections and everything else um, I, I saw that ankle at the One Day Cup final and was heavily strapped, heavily, heavily. Is he is he an, is he an IPL pick or has he got off to, off time? Look, it's going to be quite interesting because if he gets selected in the IPL, he'll have to he'll want to go because it's a massive payday. Um, and so, well, I mean, the auction's been done already. No, yeah. No. So Did he's he not he's not in the IPL. He's not in the IPL. Okay. Well, it's, sure, he's got time out then, doesn't he? He has the surgery yeah. before. It's, a, it's about a three to four, three to five, six months recovery. That's the only issue that he, he's had. Um, and so I see why I didn't want to take the surgery now because of SA20. Um, but probably after SA20, he has to do it. Mm. See, it, it's all come because of the retirement of Quentin de Kock from tests. Yeah. So Ryan saw, saw a position. He saw a chance to take it. I want to take that position. I want to make it my own. I'm in good form. So that's why this this is where this impasse is at. Cricket South Africa says you can't play. He's saying, there's nothing wrong with me. Um, that's why that, that situation. If that was not the case, if Quentin de Kock was still playing test cricket, Ryan would have had surgery by now. He would have uh, yeah. done oh, it. After SA20. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's it. That seems the wise time window to do it, doesn't it? Got to take the payday when it's there, mm. though. 
Yeah. Uh, on an England side, uh, well, I think I think we've said it. Ryan Duckett, definitely the big question marks there. I'd still put a slight question mark against Chris Wokes. I don't think and somebody said unless it's Trent Bridge or or, or the Edgbaston, then <laughs> uh, or, or Lords. Not sure about how well he goes in this format. Topley, I wasn't too sure. I was excited by Ollie Stone, Archer. I think definitely uh, thought that you might add Wood into that mix. Uh, mm. Well, yeah, he'll be in the World Cup. There's some teams going to be made to dance. I think that'll be quite interesting. And thinking about one, the Ashes, yeah. those three, three. One thing that surprised me was was the fact that Mo and Ali as a bowler averages 50 in ODI cricket. That is just yeah, it's not great. Unbelievably, yet, <coughs> he's more of a part timer now. He played a terrific now. knock, didn't he? He made that 40 odd that. Um, and he did that whole one-handed attempt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it support to Butler and Milan. I think Milan did do himself a lot of favours. Yes, he starts slowly, but boy, when he gets going, he's he's. Well, he's you can do. Bit. Yeah, this, this is the thing. There's less of an argument. There's less of an argument against that in an ODI than there is in a T20. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent room for him in both in in, in yeah. both squads. Wokes, um, I think, to me, is a question mark. Uh, and if we had more spin options, I think it's very interesting. England are looking at Rayan Ahmed again in the Bangladesh yeah. tour. Uh, I think that's very exciting and see see how how uh, he goes. Uh, we'll probably need to think about time because um, poor Arian uh, is going to also turn this into an article. Our, our fabulous mm-hmm. uh, guerrilla cricket journalist, as well as uh, putting the, uh, this out as a podcast. Um, so we need to give him time to do that. Uh, just some final thoughts. Um, from an England perspective, I would probably say it was a serious defeat that felt like a win. Didn't, by dint of you know getting the late win, <laughs> the last of the three, <laughs> and the comeback of Archer, and just it felt like we were coming to the boil slowly, uh, and we boiled in the last one, uh, albeit we nearly fell into the big hole of Kimberley, but fourteen for three, but none the but nonetheless <laughs> we did a hole a hole we dug for ourselves, I might say, with some shocking batting, but fair enough, South Africa batted well. So for England, it, 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 my summary is it, it was a defeat that felt just a bit like a win particularly from what i think they would have got out of it in terms of learning what what, what where do you summarize south africa's position at the end of this and how they they felt about it our president when he started his term of office in 27 2019 said uh south africa was going into a new dawn after like 10 years of whatever it was um well that new dawn has never arrived but in the proteas this is a new dawn this is a new Rob Walter, Shukri Conrad era, and we saw glimpses of positive batting, um, of, 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 of some very aggressive bowling. Some, But our bowling's always been great, but for us, it's always been the batting. Um, obviously, Timbers found, found uh, form. The form that he had in the Test Series just comes come, has come through. Um, we've answered a few more questions. Hannah Klaassen's looking like a, a three-format player and a, a stable for this new era to come in. Um, and the fact that we're not talking about Zimbabwe too often tells me, yeah, we're, we're going in the right direction. Hopefully it's not a new manager bounce, but it's a new manager uphill climb. The only other thing I can caveat is in a World Cup year, South Africa normally does this. So by the time <laughs> we get we'll come to, to the world just a bit too soon, and then they'll be talked of as a <laughs> down when the tournament yeah, arrives. Right. Exactly. So it could be that tournament, tournament cricket or tournament World football. Cup you know, that, this is it. You've got, you've got. Well, you, you, if you're building at the right time, you're building at the right time because a lot of it means bugger all in between, really, <laughs> doesn't it? You know, I mean, it's uh, bilaterals are bilaterals, but it's World Cup to World Cup right is momentum at the right time. I think you know, I, I think England are uh, actually on the right course for that. I don't give a crap that we lost three one you know, 2-1 and that we lost all those ODIs and T20s last year. We lost all those ODIs and T20s last year and then won a World Cup. Uh, we're current World Cup, uh, you know, ODI champions. Uh, I think we'll be competitive when we go to India. Um, India will be India and be looking to win on home soil uh, and they might have that. Hopefully more competitive than New Zealand were in the last series. Um, well... well <laughs> Well, that, that, that's probably, we should probably cut and run here. Our, our next outing, we should tell you if you're listening to this or indeed reading this, uh, is going to be, we're going to be covering Aust- uh, India versus Australia in the first test. That starts on the 9th. We're all looking forward to that. Then, of course, it's England and New, New Zealand uh, with uh, England as their 
as their as their visitors. So Baz Ball in the that. home of in the home of Baz. Baz Ball in in Baz home. Baz home, which does sound like Bazland. A, a village. Baz Ball in Baz. Baz Ball in Bazland. <laughs> It's like Cole, Cole's coming home to Newcastle. Exactly. Bad, bad's coming home to Bazland. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, thank you all very much. The bear, as insightful as ever. Actually, you did manage to get the whole thing without swearing once, I think. I'd have to listen. Uh, to I it probably again. sweared somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure it's you did at some even. point, but I, it must have been. It was quite discreet. Uh, Tim, thank you. Magnificent as ever for your time. And Poe, always a delight. Thank you. Uh, do let us know if uh, if you haven't already about your availabilities, of course, for the other things we're covering. And uh, thank you all very much and uh, take care. Cheers all. Bye. Bye. Revolutionary, Revolutionary. 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 Revolutionary.